So this video is a bit of a combination between GNOME versus Pantheon and Ubuntu versus Elementary OS. However, I really just want to focus on the desktop environments, that being GNOME versus Pantheon, and make this video less about the distros themselves. Now Pantheon is a desktop environment developed by the Elementary OS team for the Elementary OS Linux distribution, which is based on Ubuntu. Pantheon does work with other distros like Arch, Fedora, and OpenSUSE, However, Elementary OS is the flagship for Pantheon. GNOME, on the other hand, is a desktop environment developed by a very large international team of contributors and volunteers for lots of different Linux distributions. Ubuntu 18.4, which is the distribution I'm targeting for this video, uses GNOME 3.28. Now I know a lot of you right now are screaming at your computer, What the hell, EG? Why are you using Ubuntu instead of Fedora? And the reason for that is actually pretty simple. Elementary OS is based on Ubuntu. Fedora is very much its own thing, and it uses a bunch of different apps, like it uses a different package manager, a different firewall, a different ACL setup, SC Linux, and a whole lot more. By using Ubuntu, I can focus on comparing just the GNOME apps to the Pantheon apps without having to worry about what's happening underneath. I know that still a lot of people are gonna be unhappy with that, but tough. So that's about enough explaining what this video is about. Let's go ahead and dive right on in. So Pantheon is based on the same underlying technology that GNOME is based on, and as such, there's a lot of shared technology and subsystems between the two. Examples are GNOME Session, GNOME Keyring, the GNOME Settings Daemon, GVFS, which is a virtual file system, Pulse Audio, which is the standard Linux sound server, Zeitgeist for searching and indexing, and as far as I know, the only user-facing application that's shared between the two is Epiphany, which is recently renamed to Web, which is weird, but it's basically the web browser. Now before we start comparing the applications and things, let's take a look at the system resources. At idle, right after login, there is a 250 megabyte difference between the two environments and distros. The Ubuntu flavor of GNOME seems to be more memory hungry than Pantheon and Elementary OS. It feels like that maybe Pantheon consumes a bit more CPU than GNOME at idle, but they're about the same regardless. Now taking a look at the active processes, Gala is Pantheon's window manager, the equivalent on the GNOME side is GNOME Shell, though GNOME Shell does like a bunch of different things. But just comparing the GNOME Shell to Gala, Gala consumes 80 megabytes, whereas GNOME Shell consumes a very hungry 170 megabytes. And even when you add up the memory consumption of Gala, Plank, and Wing Panel, it only comes to 107 megabytes, which is still quite a bit less than GNOME's very hungry 170 megabytes. Now let's compare the resource utilization across some apps. We'll start with the text editor. GNOME has gedit and Pantheon has code. gedit uses 14 megabytes of memory. Code uses nine. That's pretty damn impressive considering code is basically a lightweight IDE. Next, we'll compare the file browsers. GNOME has Nautilus and Pantheon has files, though they're actually both called files. The Nautilus process specifically for the actual browser consumes 13, though the Nautilus desktop consumes 20. I'm not gonna count that. Pantheon file consumes just under 10 megabytes, though it also has a companion daemon which consumes under one megabyte. Now let's take a look at music browsers. GNOME has Rhythmbox, Pantheon has Elementary Music. Rhythmbox consumes 36 megabytes, Elementary Music consumes 18 megabytes. Next up is the video players. GNOME has Totem, which is called Videos. Pantheon has Videos, again, the same name, which is weird. Totem consumes a hair under 24 megabytes. Pantheon's videos consumes 18 megabytes, just under 19. Comparing the terminal emulators is an interesting one. GNOME terminal consumes 8.5 megabytes. The Pantheon terminal consumes 9.6 megabytes. So finally, an application that consumes more than the GNOME counterpart. And now let's take a look at the photo viewers. The Ubuntu flavor of GNOME uses Shotwell, which is a GNOME application, though GNOME photos is probably more common. Pantheon uses Elementary Photos, which is actually a fork of Shotwell. The GNOME version of Shotwell uses 21 megabytes. Pantheon's Photos uses 19 megabytes. Kind of interesting considering they're basically the same program. Now let's go ahead and compare some apps side by side. We'll start with the calendar apps. GNOME's app is called GNOME Calendar. The Pantheon app is just called Calendar. And as you can see, they're pretty similar other than some styling differences. With GNOME calendars, you can easily switch between week, month, and year. With Pantheon's calendar, it's a little bit different, not quite as intuitive. 
It feels like Gnome Calendar is better suited for getting a quick snapshot of what your week or month looks like, whereas the Pantheon Calendar is better suited to connect to like your Google Calendar or just create events right here from the calendar. And Gnome Calendar can do the same thing, but it's not nearly as intuitive as the Pantheon Calendar is. And now let's take a look at the file browsers. You can see that the Pantheon file browser is clearly inspired by Nautilus. Nautilus has this thing called Other Locations, which is where you go if you want to look at your networks or look at your root drive. With Pantheon, there's a section called Devices, which lists your file system. And there's another section in the side pane called Network, which lists your network. With Pantheon files, you can also split up the view very Mac OS-esque like. I know a lot of people like this, and I also know a lot of people don't like it. I think it's a pretty cool feature. With Nautilus, you can't do anything like that. You can either look at the icons as tiles or as like a detail list. Now let's take a look at the file editors, gedit versus code. Now, like I said before, code is basically a lightweight IDE. It can do a lot of really cool stuff. Now gedit can technically do pretty much everything that code does. However, code has defaults and has much better usability for somebody that wants to use it as an IDE. For example, you can change the tab width, the code highlighting, and the line numbers straight from the top here. With gedit, you have to either change it from the toolbar or go to the bottom right, which is weird. With code, you can also very easily change the theme, like the color scheme of the editor, which is awesome. Again, you can do that with GNOME, but you have to dig into the application preferences, which is buried in the top bar. It's really weird. But like I said, they're basically equivalent. Next up, we'll look at the video application. There's nothing really much to say about Pantheon videos. It just plays videos and that's literally it. I didn't have a video to show because there's not really any reason to. It plays videos, not much else. Gnome's video app, Totem, has this channel section where you can go online and look at like movie trailers and stuff. It's kind of interesting, but functionally it does the exact same thing that Pantheon videos does. You can search your file system and watch videos. That's it, which is fine. It doesn't need to do a whole bunch of stuff. Now comparing the music players is cool because Rhythmbox can do a lot of things. Rhythmbox can not only play your local collection, but it can also plug into online sources from Last.fm to SoundCloud. I was actually able to find my own music that's on SoundCloud straight here from Rhythmbox, so that was pretty awesome. Pantheon's music, or I think it used to be called Noise, is much, much more limited. It can find music on your local drive and play it. I didn't see a way to connect to online sources, but I did find an equalizer, which is super cool. I didn't find an equalizer in Rhythmbox. I always appreciate equalization when it comes to music, and it's super cool that Pantheon Music has that. And now let's take a look at the photo apps. Now because Pantheon Photos is a fork of Shotwell, you can see that they look very similar. Now I couldn't really find a lot of difference between the two, but the biggest difference I saw was that Shotwell on the GNOME side has a toolbar at the top. Pantheon Photos does not, and I thought that that was a little odd because there are features in Shotwell that are hidden in the toolbar, and since Pantheon doesn't have the toolbar, you can't actually access those features. Very odd design choice. Next we've got the terminal emulators. GNOME Terminal is a little odd because it doesn't use header bars. A header bar is, well, just look at Pantheon Terminal. You can see at the top where you have the window decorations to close and maximize, there's also a little cog. That's the header bar, and the idea is that it moves all of the tools and functionality out of the toolbar into the header bar to make it look more cohesive. GNOME Terminal still uses a toolbar, and you can see that the tabs are, like, hideous. It's really bad. Functionally, the terminals are pretty much the same. However, in my opinion, it goes without saying that Pantheon Terminal is way better looking than GNOME Terminal is. Now, the last application we're going to look at for this video is the screenshot taking applications. There's not really a whole lot to say between the two. They do virtually the exact same thing. The Pantheon one is arguably better looking. However, the Pantheon screenshotter has a very interesting feature. It can conceal text. And I put that in quotes because it doesn't actually work very good. If I take a screenshot of the terminal, you'll see that the text like in the tabs and stuff is sort of scribbled out, but the text in the terminal isn't. That's not terribly surprising because the typefaces are different and maybe it can't figure out what's what, but it's a really interesting feature. I know for work, I take screenshots of all sorts of stuff and sometimes there's stuff in the screenshots that I don't wanna make public. I'm not exactly sure how this feature works. It's very interesting. Not even Spectacle, the KDE version of the screenshot application can do that. So that's a pretty darn cool feature. 
And with that, we've reached the end of the video. I hope that you guys have liked this one. It's actually been on my backlog for a while, and it was pretty darn fun to record it. I tried not to be too biased in this video because I don't want to accidentally suggest that one desktop environment is better than the other. But what I will say is I am personally stunned that the Pantheon applications are generally more lightweight than the GNOME applications. However, it's definitely worth pointing out that Ubuntu 18.4 does not have the latest and greatest version of GNOME. And it's worth pointing out that Pantheon does not use the latest version of GTK. So it's kind of a toss up and a weird comparison either way. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you want to support the channel, check out the description. I'm partnered with Linode, so if you use my code, which is EG, to sign up for an account, you'll get a credit and it'll help the channel. I've also got a Patreon, you can check me out there. I appreciate everybody's support, and thanks for watching.